Hello everyone. Welcome back to Search Engine Optimization Online. I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. On our last video, we talked about the client company profile and why it's valuable to know as many aspects of your business as possible to help us optimize. So go back to that video if you haven't watched it and fill out that document. Again, it's not homework. Don't turn it in, but this is for yourself. In this video, we're going to look at the Campos SEO 1 long tail strategy document. This will be another hands-on activity where we are going to uh, start to do some keyword research and competitor analysis. I'm going to go ahead and open up that document. Let me talk about the document in general and then we'll actually do some of these things. What does your brand offer? Nowadays, search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You will have a better chance of being found with authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. That's the long tail. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define your long tail keywords. So what I'm saying in this paragraph is that people are going to search more specifically with more specificity nowadays than in the old days. In the old days, you could be found by having the keyword Italian restaurant in your site. But that's when there was less competition and less people searching. Nowadays, people are not going to search for Italian restaurant because they're going to get a million results with 9,000 of them that are not valuable. So people are going to be specific and search for authentic Italian food or best Italian restaurant or good Italian food near me. People are going to be specific in the way they search. And that's the long tail keyword strategy. We need to develop keywords that are more specific that will help us get found rather than, rather than these generic keywords of the past. Let me draw you a little picture. I'm going to draw a simple X and Y chart on the on the Y axis vertically this will be frequency and on the X axis horizontally this will be keyword and then I will have a chart that looks like this so what we have here is on the left side there is some keyword at this point that has a lot of frequency meaning people use that keyword a lot you will be a needle in a haystack if you choose this keyword whatever it is like Italian food a lot of people are gonna be using that keyword which will possibly make it difficult for you to be found somewhere along the axis there will be a keyword that I'm going to use that less people use making it easier for me to get found and then there will be keywords further out in the periphery that I may use that even less people use so our strategy is to not use keywords that everyone is using because then we won't get found our strategy is to try to develop keywords that less people are using but not to a degree that no one is using because therefore no one is searching and you won't be found so something way off on the fringes over here might not be found very easily we want to look for keywords more in this area somewhere around here this is an in 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 inexact chart of course but that's what my handout is about at this point our long tail keyword strategy figuring out keywords somewhere over here 
We have two ways to do this. And as we figure these keywords out, we're also doing competitor analysis. Now what I want to do is open up some sort of text editor. You can get Microsoft Word or Notepad, Pages, whatever you want. But I'm going to load up some sort of document where I can write notes. I'm going to load up just a simple basic text file. None of this will be turned in. This is all for yourself. But I'm going to save this and call it something like uh, competitor analysis and long tail keywords. So I'm going to jump back and forth between a few things. This document, my notes, and a web browser. What we're going to be doing first is doing some searching the old way. So I've got go to a search engine and search a simple keyword from your niche, your topic, your business, your brand. For the first page of results, write the title and description from each site. So I'll just copy and paste that. I'll show you how in a moment. I'm going to click those results so that I can see my competition. I'll be writing notes about them. For example, when was the site last updated? Does it have a blog? Is the design modern? Etc. I may not have the language of a web designer. But how does that saying go? I may not know art, but I know what I like. Then we're going to do the new method after that long tail. We'll get to that in a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a web browser. So any web browser you like, I'm going to use Vivaldi. You can use Safari, Internet Explorer, etc. I'm going to go to one of the two search engines we'll be focusing on. I'm going to go to google.com. I've got the fictional business Victor's Bakery. So based on my first handout, the old way generic keywords, just a simple keyword. I'm going to search for bakery. I'm going to ignore anything that might suggest location and such. I'll just type the basic keyword bakery. And I'm going to see some results. I get 206 million results. I get a map with results, images, and then results. The purpose of this exercise is to show you, depending on your keywords, it may be difficult or easy or easier to get ranked. And as I've said before, and I'll continue to say, search engine optimization is complicated. There's a lot of things to do. So looking at our results here, the point is we need to find results of businesses that you're in competition with. I'm going to ignore, if anything pops up as an ad, ignore the ads. They're usually marked with some sort of indicator that it's an ad. So avoid those for the moment. I'm also going to avoid any results that appear in some form of spotlight like this. These are not ads, but they get this preferential treatment because they've created a Google Plus page. So make yourself a note. If you create a Google Plus business page, it may help you rank a little better because Google is going to give preferential treatment to their own properties. So on your own at some point, you may want to go to business.google.com and set up your business on Google to help you get ranked. Also known as google.com slash business. Either or worked. I typed business.google.com or you can go to google.com slash business. I'm going to skip those and look for real results. The 10 base bakeries in Chula Vista. Now it generally knows my location. I'm going, to rev I'm going to ignore that Yelp because it's Yelp. I don't want to look at that just yet. I get a result here from Sweet Sisters. This is Yelp. This is a real business, but it's their Yelp profile. Think about this. People are always trying to get their number one result. And people think that the only way to do it is through their home page. This business, Sweet Sisters, is number one, but their Yelp profile is number one. 
not their main website. So that's why SEM, search engine marketing, is invaluable. What are you doing outside of your website? If you haven't claimed your Yelp business yet, that's one of the things you need to go off and do. It's not in the scope of our class, but I'm going to tell you, it's not that difficult. Go to Yelp.com, claim your business, and that could help you rank number one. Never mind that it's not your home page, it's still your online presence. I'm going to skip that result as well. And I see finally a real result. La Concha Bakery. LaConchaBakery.org. La Concha Bakery is a family-owned bakery specializing in fresh Mexican bread. We use only the freshest ingredients and family recipes passed down from... And then it's cut off. So my activity is that I'm going to go in and select this first chunk of information, this first result, the title and the rest. I'm going to select that and copy it so that I can then put it into my note document here. I'm going to say first um, generic keyword search bakery. First result, La Concha Bakery. What we get from the results, the first item is the meta title. We then get the URL or the address of the business. And then we get the meta description. All of these things are editable. All of these are in your power title. I'm just going to shorten it to title instead of meta title. Title. The spot where you can promote your business on the search engine. I'll initial that SE on the search engine first. Notice all of these results, their most prominent bit is the title. Sweet Sisters Bakery, La Concha Bakery, Carlos's Bakery of Cake Boss, Chico's Bakery, Tartine Bakery. Use this spot to put the most important info first, then. If this is the first thing that will be shown to people, this is where you're going to put in the keywords that you're trying to get found by, the name of your business, etc. What about a phone number? None of these have a phone number in their title, but they're putting in things such as location, San Francisco, neighborhood restaurant, catering, free Wi-Fi bakery and cafe. They're putting these keywords that will help people uh, find them. URL. It's no longer necessary to have your keywords in your URL. Yes, many of the results that are appearing here do have the keyword bakery in their address. You see La Concha Bakery.org, Carlos Bakery.com, chicosbakery.com, tartinebakery.com. In all of these, they have the example of the word bakery in their address. But there are many examples that you will find on your searches, probably, where that keyword is not in the title, uh, that is in the address. And that's okay. It's no longer necessary to have that keyword because, because all the good keyword rich URLs have been taken. The web websites have been around for more than 25 years and if you're just going to set up a website and you're going to choose your company name there it may have been taken unfortunately there's a lot of cyber squatters out there these people are companies that buy up names in the hopes of one day selling them to the interested party where you could normally buy a website name for fifteen dollars some of these names can be sold for fifteen hundred dollars simply because someone wants to make a buck the search engines realize this so you don't need 
to have all of your keywords in the address because also a lot of spammers put keywords in their addresses. What I would recommend avoid dashes. So if I couldn't get Victor's Bakery, I'm not gonna go get Victor's Dash Bakery because then it's awkward to share your address, especially in person talking about it. Yeah, visit us at victors-bakery.com. Someone is then gonna go to the uh, to the web browser and type, oh, victors-bakery. No, I meant the dash. I meant the hyphen. So we'll start telling people, go to victors-bakery.com, and they'll say, how do you spell hyphen? So avoid dashes. You cannot use underscores in the address. You can use numbers. You can go in and put something like Victor's Bakery San Diego, sure. The problem with being that specific, though, is then it's getting difficult and cumbersome, and believe it or not, then it's starting to look spammy because that's what the spam accounts do. They create these addresses with huge names to try to trick people in the search engine into getting found because they've got all the keywords. So I'll say avoid dashes, avoid long names. So these things sound pretty restrictive. Not really. You should be able to optimize just about any URL. It may be more complicated with some of these names, but again, SEO can often be complicated. And lastly, I have description. In about 160 characters, try to write a few keyword rich sentences that describe your business. Adding an address or contact info is valuable. So again, the point of this is you're going to look at the competition. You're going to look at what have other people written on their descriptions. You're going to see what's working for them and what you can incorporate yourself. So I'll, I'll get one more example. Notice it did say one in San Francisco. So OK, that's a little bit far. Um, here's another one, um, Chico's Bakery. I'm going to copy that one, paste it into my notes. Chico's Bakery, they're at chicosbakery.com. Chico's Bakery is a premier Mexican bakery and cake shop serving Chula Vista since 1984. So I see the keywords of family owned at La Concha, family recipes. I see uh, the keyword premier Mexican bakery. I see serving Chula Vista. So that's for the people that are looking for a specific bakery at a specific location. Based on this, I'm perhaps starting to figure out some more keywords that might be valuable for me to use on my website. In a different lesson later, after we've built some keywords, we're going to look at adding these things to the actual site. So it is our competition, but I am going to click on some of these results because I need to further do some research. Alright, so the purpose of looking at your competition then is to see what have they done on their website, what is working for them, and perhaps helping you figure out what needs to be done for your website. This is the part then that via my handout it might be useful for you to uh, get some starting points about what to write. When was it updated? Does it have a blog? Is the, is the design modern? Is the site mobile friendly? So let's see, I see home page, contact, cakes, location, history of Pan Dulce, a phone number at the very top, which is um, one of the first things visible. Maybe that's one of the most important things because then I can get people to contact me right away. 
like Concha Bakery's family owned bakery specializing in fresh Mexican bread. We use only the freshest ingredients passed down from three generations located at blah, 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 etc. Phone number. If you notice, this text is the exact text that I saw on the result. And then it gets cut off. So you have only a limited amount of space to write that. Various pictures that go through a slideshow. 55 pictures, I think that's a bit excessive. Then a video. The quality of the video is not so good and the alignment of it seems pretty weird. And I'm not playing with sound at the moment, but the concept, I like this concept. This is obviously more work. Oh, this is actually coming off of KPBS, if you notice in the corner. So this was a free video. They might not really have the rights to use it, but never mind. So anyway, a little bit of multimedia to catch people's attention, the baked goods and so forth. The website builder, okay, let's say I'm going to go look at another place, their contact info. Here's a form for people to send a message. This is actually very good because what you want to do is you want to have a contact form on your website instead of simply your email address naked out there. So if you simply have your uh, contact at victorsbakery.com, if you have that, get prepared to get a lot of spam because that's what that does. The spam bots that browse the internet non-stop are looking for anything that is of the pattern something at something dot something. If it falls into that pattern, most likely it's an email, it'll be harvested and sold, and you're gonna get spammed. To avoid that, have a contact form. This is a little more secure, although I don't see the security. I clicked submit and I don't know what it did. It may have actually sent the message or not. But what I'm saying is, your contact form should have the ability for someone to fill in those weird numbers and letters. That's a bit of security that helps prevent spam. They have a section on cakes. That's a keyword that helps them get found, and it's a link. Here's another order form for people to fill in. There's a coupon. What happens if I click Submit? No feedback. Location with a nice map. So if you do have a location, you should uh, see about adding some sort of map feature to your site. Visually, it's not implemented so well, and by that I mean that on the edges here, the text runs up right to the edge. That's not very professional. But the value of this screen is that it's full of keywords uh, that people could be searching for to help them get found. There's the keyword French techniques. People may be searching for sweet bread, pan dulce breakfast meal. These are various keywords that might help them get found, so this screen is valuable. Looking at my notes for this particular result, I'm going to write no update date, no blog, yes, lots of contact info, lots of good images, map, phone number. So I'm just trying to make any sort of notes. I'm making notes. I'm doing competitor analysis about what I'm up against. They may not have the best looking site out there, but they have the number one result. Oh, I just noticed there's a very hard to view bit of text right there. Okay, there's the copyright 2016. I'll say some text is hard to read. So I'm just making notes about all the websites that I found. I would do the same thing like that for the other website. Chico's Bakery, for example. Huh. 
I don't think I have any ad blocker turned on, but I don't really see anything. And honestly, unfortunately, I have to say this is a very, very basic looking website. It's actually... I was about to say it's totally empty, but... This map doesn't look to be, to be accurate. This map seems to be showing Oklahoma, whereas this business is in Chula Vista. So unfortunately, this is not a very good site, but notice they are one of the ones ranked on page one. So for Chico's Bakery, they might have gotten this sort of fame um, that supersedes the quality of their website. So I'll say long established business makes up for shoddy website. Back to the handout, I would then engage in the second type of competitor analysis using the new way, long tail. In a clean search engine, search for a long tail keyword. And basically you'll do the same thing. This one is going to be a much more detailed search. Now, the note that I have here about clean at the bottom. A clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies and browsing history before using this search engine. This will give you more accurate results. Also, using private browsing is helpful. I recommend having a web browser just for these types of searches. This is important to get results like how your potential visitors would. What I mean here is, let's say I'm going to, if I were to reset my main browser, that would reset my passwords and everything. So if I were to open a different web browser, maybe I'm going to use Firefox. So what I would do is I would need to go over to the settings somewhere. I would need to search my settings to reset my browser maybe over privacy somewhere, history, remember history, no, clear recent history. So somehow I have to figure out in my web browser, and we're not really going to do it in this class because everyone's web browser is different, but you need to look up in your web browser, how do you clean the cookies? How do you clear the history? How do you go into private mode? Because once you do that and you do search, you will get these results that are more accurate or should be more accurate because the search the web browser remembers what you do and not really that it's spying on you and that sort of thing it's just trying to help you uh, get your work done if you constantly visit certain websites if you constantly search for certain terms the web browser sees this and wants to help you by showing these um, these things a lot faster. So I'm in private mode. I'm going to go to a search engine. I'll try Bing this time. Same thing. You want to do the searching in Bing and in in uh, in Google. So this time I'm going to search Mexican bakery in San Diego. I get a lot of results again. I get some that are this nice picture at the top. That's because they have set themselves up on Yelp. Again, if you're not on Yelp, you may be missing out. So let's say I skip all of those. I skip Yelp. Again, a lot of results are coming for Yelp or the Yellow Pages or Groupon. Yellow Pages, MapQuest, TripAdvisor, MapQuest. So if I'm looking at the address of all of these businesses, there's Yelp, there's Groupon, etc. None of these are the business itself. So again, why aren't you on Yelp? Why aren't you on TripAdvisor, Yellow Pages, etc.? That's modern SEO. Don't expect to just figure out a couple keywords and put them on your homepage and you'll get found. There's way too much competition. 
in this particular result, Hilda's Bakery is very prominent. They've got a picture up there from Yelp. They've got a result over here from Yelp. They've got another result from Groupon. Another Yelp result. I'm going to skip all of these. I'm going to try to find results for the purposes of my exercise that are not these types of aggregator sites. Not City Search, not TripAdvisor, Zomato, Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to try to find a real result. I had to go to page 3 to find a real result. Elijah's Restaurant.com and Bakery. So that's the one I'm going to start to do a little competitor analysis for. This is long tail keyword. Mexican bakery in San Diego. That's what I used to search. And the first result was Elijah's Bakery with their address and so forth. Notice they have put their address and phone number right in their description. Maybe I don't even need to go to the website. Maybe I have that phone number and I order a cake. That's a win. You have to think in terms not just about getting people to my website. Well, it's getting people to your Twitter, getting people to your Yelp, getting people to see your contact info. That is modern SEO. That is modern SEM. I'm going to click on the result to do a little bit of analysis on their site. A lot of information. What the things that they sell. Kaiser rolls, poppy seed strudel, plain cheesecake. They've got the keyword San Diego and their phone number to order. A lot of pictures. Catering menu, online request. It's showing their awards and such. So there's a reason why they've got the higher result, the highest result of the regular results. And again, by that I mean this is not the Yelp result, this is not the paid result, this is a regular non-paid result. This should also show you, they were on page 3. People are going to stick perhaps to page 1, and on page 1, the first result that I get that seems to be real is Hilda's Mexican Bakery. But going to that result is Yelp. And you may not believe Yelp, you may not trust Yelp, but plenty of other people do. So then the point of this type of search, you're going to do the same thing. Search that keyword for as many results as you like. Do a little bit of reconnaissance on their website, which was then going to help you on to the next part here, 10 simple keywords, bakery, family, Chula Vista, cake, etc. I'm going to develop these 10 keywords that I'm going to use upon my site in different lectures. And then I'm going to develop about five or so long tail keywords. So. So based on what we, what we found here, I'm going to develop these keywords. Mexican bakery in, and then whatever location. Get directions to our bakery. Mexican bakery reviews. Oh, this is the five long tail. By researching your competition, you are seeing what has worked for them. You are defining what sets you apart and what you have to offer in contrast to your competition. You will use your long tail keywords throughout your site, but you will also create content that fits the overall theme of your site. You will become an authority in the field you've targeted. You will create content on a regular basis and will spread this content through the internet. We'll look at these things in detail later. But spreading your content, that's social media. 
you're going to use social media to reach an audience. You will create content on a regular basis. That's blogging. You will write blogs. You will create content. You'll become an authority. That means you will have a website. You will have a Yelp. You will have an online presence. You will have a Twitter, etc. If your site already exists, we're going to add your keywords to the various pages of your site and such, but you will also create new content based on the keywords that we're developing. And you can check out the recommended book, it's optional. You can check out Chapter 1, Quality Content, for more information about that. So we're on our way. You should follow this activity. You should then ask questions in the discussion board if necessary or send me an email and you're going to start to build this foundation of positive findability and next week we will have more lectures where we get into more detail